Hi guys, this is Matthias, and as you may or may not know, Fallout 4 is going to be released in just a few days. So I decided to share with you something that I found out just very recently. It is the Fallout 4 Build Planner. Now the link to this website will be in the description. And basically what it does is that it helps you understand how to build your character. And you can try out different builds by distributing your points as you see fit. So now before I continue with the video, I just want to say this. There are quite a number of people that consider the information in this shot a bit of a spoiler. So if you are one of those players who do not want to take the risk of being spoiled, then I just want to let you know that I will make more character builds in the future, and hopefully you'll find them interesting, but for now, you probably want to shut the video off. So, before you actually play the game, it is of course going to be almost impossible to decide how you want to build your character. But uh, as I was fiddling around with this, I found it to be actually very interesting and it gave me a lot of flashbacks back to Fallout 3 and also Fallout New Vegas. Now the character that I put together for you here is very close to what I believe that I'm going to start with as the game releases. I'm planning on making a uh, mostly all-round type of build based on intelligence because intelligence has always been the most important special attribute the way I played the previous games. So now what you want to do if you want to try this out is that you click on perk chart that you can see here at the bottom of the registration form. Now this is what it looks like and the reason why I decided to set three points at strength is because of armorer. I am very interested in the crafting part of Fallout 4 and according to Bethesda themselves they have put a lot of work into this in order to improve it. And I have to say from what we have seen so far what, the, what Bethesda have shown us it actually looks really really interesting. Now, of course, it's meant to look interesting and uh, all of us, or most of us at least, has been disappointed by different game companies in the past. Let's hope that Bethesda can deliver. Now, the next attribute is Perception, and I only put this to level 2, which uh, surprised me a lot because Perception is actually quite important to the way I play the game. I mean, the way I used to play the, the previous games. But already at rank 2, you get a Rifleman, and this seems like a very important perk if you want to play as a sniper. And I will use sniper rifles, I'm actually planning on sniping quite a lot, but I'm not going to build a sniper character, it's not going to be my main combat style. Now your level of perception used to be the deciding factor to at what distance enemies showed up on your minimap. Perception is described as your environmental awareness. But in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas you had skill points, and that is something that has been removed as far as we know in Fallout 4. And because of that, and based on the information on this build planner, I decided that Perception 2 would be enough to start off with. Now if you're planning on using for example explosives, you probably want to go up to level 5 on Perception. And for the ones of you who really want to play with plasma weapons and laser weapons, you'd probably think that perception would be really important based on the previous games, but it doesn't seem to be the case now. I believe that energy weapons are just going to fall under the same category as regular guns. I also want to quickly mention that I'm not planning on using VATs. I never did in the previous games, and I'm not going to do so in Fallout 4. So for Endurance, I set that to level 3, but I'll be honest, this is very likely to be the first thing that I change. At the rank 3 you have a life giver and this allows you to increase your maximum health. Now the usefulness of that is quite self-explanatory, but what is actually more important or more interesting I would say is what you get at rank 4, which is chem resistant. So using chems, uh, medicines and drugs some such, is something that you can do in order to temporarily boost your character. Now you can either loot and find these chems, you can buy them or you can make them yourself. And again, this is part of crafting, something that I'm interested in, both for the crafting part and for the effect. However, using chems has some strong negative side effects, meaning that you can be addicted to them. And that is the reason why I might go with the uh, Endurance on level 4 in order to get chem resistant, but I'm not entirely sure that I will be able to get my hands on or be able to craft any chems in the early part of the game, so we'll have to see where that goes. I also have to, of course, decide what to sacrifice if, uh, in order to get me another point. As far as I can tell, I'll probably have to do that from agility, but we'll talk about that once we get there. And then we have Charisma, and in, on Charisma I set that to level 2, and that's because I want to have Lady Killer. Now what Lady Killer does is that women suffer 5% extra damage in combat, and they're also easier to persuade in dialogue. Now it doesn't reveal anything about unique dialogues, such as what we've seen in the past, so this might be another one of those that I lower, possibly for endurance. And then we get to intelligence, 
and this has always been the most important one for my characters. Now the important thing to remember about intelligence is that intelligence affects the number of experience points you earn whenever you earn them. So needless to say, if you want to level up fast and try a lot of things, then this is probably quite important to you as well. Now I set mine to 9 and I did so because bubble heads are back in the game and once you find a bubble head there's, there's one for each special attribute and once you find one you will permanently raise that attribute by one. Now, of course depending on how hard it is to find the bubble head for intelligence it might actually be worth it to go up to level 10 right away. But since we at this point in time don't know that I'm gonna leave it at 9 for now. So at level 9 you have nuclear physicist. And this actually reveals something that is uh, news to me, and that is radiation weapons. Of course, I'm quite eager to try them out, but there are many perks in the intelligence chain, so to speak, that uh, are interesting to me. You have robotic expert, chemist, science, scrapper, hacker, and uh, keep in mind that a lot of these things has to do with crafting, so if you, just like me, are interested in that, this is something that you want to check out a little bit extra. So next up here we have Agility, and I have always associated Agility with Combat. Now at level 6 you have a moving target, and uh, the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to doubt this. I'll probably sacrifice a few Agility points in order to set them at least at Endurance and some other place I'm, I haven't decided yet. And another thing that I would like to mention about Agility is that the level 9 and level 10, the top ones, are all about the VATs, so I'm not all that interested in going too high on agility. But either way, at rank 5, you have something that is actually quite interesting, even if you're not using VATs, and that is Action Boy. At the first rank, your action points regenerate 25% faster. Now you might be wondering why is that interesting if you are not using VATs, well, that's because your sprinting is depending on your VATS points. You can only sprint until you have consumed your VATS points, and then they have to regenerate for you to be able to sprint further. Now, sprinting didn't exist originally in Fallout 3 or New Vegas, but just like with the difference between Fallout 3 and New Vegas, a lot of the differences are just mods, and these are made by modders in the modding community, and of course, since Bethesda owns the rights to the finished product, they can then decide whether or not they want to put this in their next game. Which they did with a lot of mods from Fallout 3 that they put into Fallout New Vegas. And we see the same thing here, as far as I can tell. So now, as much as I've been talking about sacrificing points in agility, I'm actually also considering the opposite. Now, the reason for that is what you get at rank 7 and rank 8. Now at rank 7 you get the perk Ninja, and at rank 8 you get Quick Hands. Now with Ninja doing 2.5% more damage with the ranged weapons, and 4% more damage with melee weapons, that is a very very strong perk. Now Quick Hands gives you the ability to reload faster, and for my build that might actually be quite important. But the way I see it, I believe that most people will appreciate Ninja a lot more. So yeah, Agility is a tough one. You get a really good perk already at the rank 2, which is Commando. Sneak at rank 3, something that I haven't really decided on yet. I'm a little bit on and off when it comes to sneaking, but I, I really like having the option, at least when it comes to initiating a fight against multiple enemies. So next up here we have Luck, and at rank 3 you have the perk Bloody Mess. Now this is one of those uh, kinda humoristic perks that, in a way, almost helps defining Fallout. Mixing humor and violence in a way that uh, to many people probably seems a bit disturbing, but to us gamers is more like just the icing on the cake. Now, aside from just looking cool, if that's what you think it does, this perk will also increase your damage, starting at 5%. Another thing that I really want to mention about luck is that at level 5 you get Idiot Seventh, And that will be quite an interesting perk, or quite important perk I might add, for the ones of you who go with a character that has low intelligence. Now what this perk does is that it basically counters the lack of XP points that you will gain with a low intelligence character. Now I believe that if you focus on combat and especially a sniper build, you probably want to go quite high up uh, in luck in order to get those critical hits. And with the other points that you have to spend in order to get the combat character that you want, you just simply won't have enough to have high intelligence as well. And therefore, Idiot Savant is probably going to be quite important. So now what I've covered in this video is basically just my initial thoughts about an, about an all-round character, so to speak. And what you also can do in this character build is that you can try out 
different ways of leveling up. Now I haven't checked this out all that much yet, I'm not entirely sure that I will cover it before the game is out, and like I said it's also very likely that I will change a few things about this once I start playing the game. And also you have to realize that I'm not sure that the information so to speak that I have given you in this uh, video is perfectly correct. Either way, that's going to be all for this video and I want to thank you all for watching.